In this video, we're going to sketch the saw trigger shape. After completing this step, you'll be able to create a sketch spline. In Fusion 360, we want to carry on with our trigger data set. We're going to start a new sketch on the front plane. We're going to zoom in to the trigger area. We're going to be using lines and a spline to replicate the shape of the trigger. Now, this is problematic because portions of the trigger are hidden inside of the housing, but we're going to use our best guess to make sure that we create the trigger shape based on what we can see. To get started, I'm going to use the line tool to begin to create the shape. I'm going to start about where the curve transitions, and I'm going to bring this back and into the housing. I'm then going to come up perpendicular to that line, and then I'm going to come forward. With those perpendicular references, I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and I want to make sure that I turn off 3D sketching. I'm going to hit Escape to get off the line tool, and I want to apply some dimensions to what I have. If I need to, it can also be done that we can create a lock or a fix to one of the points on our sketch. So first, in this upper corner, I'm going to use this lock icon to fix it in place. If I hit Escape, this means that that point will now stay fixed, and this helps me better understand all the different other geometry and references I need. Next, I'm going to use my dimensions, and I'm going to set a distance between these two lines at 30 millimeters. Notice that the 30 millimeters is a bit farther below exactly where I want the trigger to be. Now, I know that on this design, it's about 30 millimeters, which is telling me that this point is actually not in the right location. So I can select it, and I can unfix it, and then I can move it around until I'm happy with its new location. If there's a better reference, for example, this point, we can always select that to fix and then let everything else float. Make sure after you fix that point that you hit escape to get off of the fix. That way we can come and apply dimensions to the rest of the geometry. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to use a two point rectangle. But notice that when I do this, it creates a horizontal reference. So instead of two point, I can use a three point rectangle, which will allow me to select two points on this line and drag it back and away. And then I can hit escape to get off that tool. Now I can use my dimensions to begin to apply some dimensions here. I'm going to right click and use aligned. Let's go ahead and move this into the screen a bit better. So once again, we'll right click and use aligned and set that at five millimeters. Then from this upper edge, I'm going to set this at 12 and a half millimeters. And the overall length backwards is going to be 20. Now, if you accidentally make the selection as a horizontal dimension, go ahead and select it and hit delete and then just reapply the dimension. Make sure that you right click and you use aligned. In this case, it's going to be 20 millimeters. And now as we're looking at this, we can go ahead and add the spline and then finalize it. I'm going to be using the fit point spline coming off of this point. I'm going to create a point right about where the black and the gray meet here, one in the middle of the trigger, one about here, and then back to this point, and I'm going to say OK. Now I want to add a tangency between the spline and these straight lines, making sure that I have that nice consistent shape. And then I can hit Escape to get off my tangency and simply move these points around until I'm happy with the shape. Remember that this can be done with these points, but it can also be done with the handles. If we use the handles instead of these intermediate points, we might get a nice smooth design, but let's go ahead and delete that intermediate point and try to use the handles to get the shape to see if we're able to replicate that shape without using any additional points. Once again, we might need to move them around, but once you're happy with the shape, we can go ahead and take a look at finalizing the dimensions. Right now, I don't have a reference for the angle, so I can either fix another point or I can add another line that's construction as a vertical reference. Once I add that vertical reference, I can then add a dimension. And this is about 77 and a half degrees. The last thing I need to do is I need to finalize the overall length of the trigger 
And then I can leave the front of it, the spline, underdefined if I want. Once again, I'm going to use aligned. I'm going to set this at 32 millimeters. And notice that that fully defines everything with the exception of some of these points. Now, if I'm happy with it, again, I can fix it or I can apply dimensions to fully define it. But I want to leave the front of the trigger underdefined as I might come back and change it. Once I'm happy with the final shapes, I can always come back and apply dimensions or change the ones I have. From here, let's make sure that we do finish the sketch. And once we're happy with it, let's make sure that we save the design before moving on.